Hey everybody, Pacific Northwest Weather Chasers here, taking a look at the current weather here briefly before we dive into some high resolution models that are coming within range now. Check out the high pressure here, it's just kind of shut down the eastern Pacific from all its storms, just a testament to the power of that ridge. And you can see how the northern part of Canada there is really cooling down. You can see the surface just showing up as blue, as cold as some of these infrared cloud tops. So right now, it's a bit windy here in the Puget Sound where I am right now, but you can see the system moving off the south coast of Alaska. This is going to be our weather maker from Christmas Eve on into Christmas Day. And there's going to be troughing that follows this also. That's going to give us some weather the day after Christmas and even into the 27th for some areas of the Pacific Northwest here. So let's go ahead and dive right in and just kind of show you what's going on here. Here's the system developing up over southeast Alaska. It's going to kind of slide down. That's going to be our weather maker Christmas Eve and Christmas. You'll see it take up residence off the Washington coast there and you can see Arctic air sliding down into British Columbia and the gradient setting up there. Going to the future here and pretty much the same thing we've been showing for the last few days. The troughing just kind of sits there. So when it does that, as we get into late Christmas night when places start dropping below freezing in the lowlands and on the coast, there's potential for some areas to get a lot more snow than others, depending on where these bands of showers and convergence set up. So going on into the 26th there, you can still see the troughing is still going on. We've got Arctic air embedded there in British Columbia. We go into the afternoon, the trough is still there, still continuing. There's probably still going to be some snowfall happening around Washington, Oregon at this point. And you can see we go into the 27th of the morning, the troughing finally starts to weaken and slide south. And then after that, it looks like we go dry for a little bit, but that can change. We'll check that out as we get closer to those events. But anyway, let's check out the European model here. This is for Christmas Eve. You can see there's going to be some, probably some snow mixed with rain down in the lowlands at this time, even on out into the Oregon, Washington coast. And then you'll notice on Christmas morning some convergent bands setting up north of Everett here. And those are those have some potential for some accumulating snowfall as you get into the afternoon on Christmas Day when they drop below freezing up there, especially southern BC, Bellingham area here. And we'll look at some high resolution models on the NAM 3KM coming up and the UW one and one third kilometer resolution run. So this goes into very late Christmas night there and you can still see there's snowfall mostly snow at this point places should be dropping below freezing here Christmas night let's go ahead and look at the map here and I'll run the euro through these temperatures you can see Seattle for example staying above freezing looks like Portland drops down then goes back up again but once you get into Christmas night you can see Seattle down to 30 degrees so anything's gonna be sticking at that point Looks like right along the immediate coast, maybe above freezing, but looks like it's going to be close there. And you can see Willamette Valley all freezing and below eastern Washington, eastern Oregon, all below freezing at this point, and of course, up by British Columbia. So then, as you can see, we fall into the ice box at that point. So anything that falls is going to stick around for a while. So keep that in mind as well. There might be a little free. Uh, refreezing and then freezing on the roadways if we get some breaks in the sun and melt some of that snow and that can be kind of dangerous to some black ice on the roadways now let's dive into the high resolution models i know i mentioned earlier in one of my twitter posts about the potential for some thunder snow and here's why i think that there is that potential so this is today we're going on to christmas eve here you can see this very cold air aloft to bring in convective available potential energy with it and that's why the SPC has a thunderstorm threat for the Washington, Oregon coast on Christmas Eve and into Christmas. And you'll notice some of this instability spreading inlands over the inland valleys here in Western Washington and Oregon. Fast forward there, and you can see it just hangs out on the coast, still persistent. And as we get into the afternoon on Christmas day, you'll see the instability building again into Western Washington and Oregon. And so when you have that instability, and you've got very cold air aloft, if you tap that, and you've got a convergent band going on in really anywhere from Western Oregon to Western Washington, you can get some weak convergence, can tap that cold air aloft, and it can cause thunder snow. I've seen thunder snow 
on several occasions here in Seattle. I've seen it. The earliest I saw it was 1981. I'm dating myself a bit there, but I was, I think I was eight years old when that happened. And I've saw, I've seen it in 1990 in Seattle. 2002, we had a, a really pretty significant thunder snow that happened. It missed SeaTac and it was hitting Boeing Field. And I remember watching it from the south and the lightning was very continuous and heavy snow was falling at Boeing Field at that time. Um, I remember 2005, we had a, a, a weak modified Arctic frontal passage go through SeaTac and thunder snow happened then. And also in 2011, I think that was February 2011, if I'm not mistaken, I saw thunder snow then. So it does happen. And with this instability around, we've got very cold air aloft coming off and picking up that moisture and coming in, probably have some convergent zone bands. And once these northerlies come down the sound, that's just going to enhance that low level convergence and give us the potential for some thunder snow. It, it's going to be a long shot, but there is that chance. And you'll see going into the afternoon here, now we're into the evening, you can still see that instability hanging around. So any kind of cape at all available in these scenarios can produce thunder snow. Now we're going to look at, you can kind of see these bands. This is at 925 millibars here, about 2,500 feet. You can see these bands of preset moving in. That's why the coast is highlighted for some thunder potential going on into Christmas day. You get the really nice convergence in some of these bands as they approach the coastline. You don't they're not being fettered by terrain. Once you get this flow over terrain, it gets broken up and mixed up a bit. So your chances go down a little bit for those good convergent zones. Um, but of course, there's a possibility for a Puget Sound convergent zone going on through here at this point into Christmas evening. And this is where we are now. So I'll just kind of show you how that cold air moves in here. This is Christmas Eve. You see that big bulk of cold air flooding into the coastline and into the inland valleys there and then overtaking the entire region and by negative about negative three you can be cold enough especially in any kind of convective band for snow all the way down to the surface so that's something we'll be watching too and the her is going to be in range for christmas day here probably by tonight yeah i think it's tonight where it just gets in the outer reaches of the 48 hours of the her that runs every six hours here are some of the bands. So it looked like, let's look at this first really quick here. Let's look at the temperatures. When are we going to drop below freezing? You can see Christmas Day. You see Bellingham go below freezing. Actually, let's do Vancouver, BC first. Vancouver, BC goes below freezing Christmas Eve, actually, looks like there. And then Bellingham goes below freezing very early Christmas morning and warms up a little bit there with some onshore flow, then cools back down. In the afternoon you'll notice most of the Puget Sound and Willamette Valley are above freezing here North Coast is getting close and you can see some of that warm air as it gets into eastern Washington too it still hasn't dropped below freezing there but that will soon change this is 5 p.m. 6 you can see that 7 p.m. North Seattle uh, Edmonds there near Everett looks like it goes below freezing and then Seattle about 4 Z which is 8 p.m drops to freezing. So any bands after this are especially going to be susceptible for accumulation all the way down to the surface. And you can see the Willamette Valley is cooling off pretty good at this point. Let's go a couple more hours and you can see all of Willamette Valley North is below freezing at this point. And this is as far out as the NAM 3 cam goes for now. So we will be watching those. Let's check out these precipitation bands as they come in. We said that Seattle goes below freezing at 4Z and there it is. You can see these precipitation bands coming in. These have potential for accumulating snowfall as they move through the region here. Then you can see those bands coming through all the way down through Western Oregon. And every place should be snow at this point, maybe except for the Southern Oregon coast and anything that gets into Eastern Washington and Oregon at this time is gonna be snow also. So there's gonna be convergent zones that are going on in here. And you, know, you can build up snow really quick if you get under the heavy part of one of these convergent zone bands. You can see those going through the Willamette Valley all the way up through the Puget Sound. It's going to be a fun night on Christmas night to be weather watching through western Washington and Oregon there and even out towards uh, northeast Washington, Spokane. Uh, you know, some of these bands will work their way through there and even out towards Idaho. And we looked at that temperature here. Let's look at one of the soundings here. So what I'm, this is what I'm talking about. This is Christmas 
at 4 p.m. and this is just outside of Seattle a little you've got a little bit of elevation here but just to show the instability you can see this profile this dotted line kind of shows what the temperature profile would be if it went up and you can see it is warmer than this so you have instability the air parcel is going to rise here and so we can get convection any kind of convection is going to trigger a snow and it, that's going to drag cold air to the surface very rapidly you can see the three kilometer cape which is low level instability is very high and you can see cape is around um, not too much here but you don't need it for these setups and you can see the precip type would of course be snow in this scenario and places that are above freezing are going to drop rapidly if a convergent band gets over top of them this includes the coastal regions willamette valley everywhere if one of these bands gets over top of you it doesn't matter if it's 38 degrees you will drop quickly as that cold air comes down in any kind of convective shower so that's what we're watching for right now this is out on the coast or no this is towards portland so 38 degrees here you can see the best guess precip type is still going to be snow that cold air is going to be pulled down to the surface very rapidly with any convection at all like i said earlier now let's take a look here at the uw run university of washington does this really high resolution model so it takes into account the warm surface of the puget sound for example a better so I'm, i brought up this wide view so you can kind of see the willamette valley and puget sound there, there's some light accumulations but this is probably not going to be sticking much for any lowland area once you get a little bit of elevation sure bellingham north yes these bands will start to accumulate early christmas morning this is christmas afternoon you can still see willamette valley puget sound generally no accumulation should be going on in the puget sound or willamette valley some of the coast might get a little bit better shot with some convective showers out there a little bit better chance for some accumulating snow down low but then as you see as we go into 4 a.m we as we saw before the region's dropping below freezing at this point and portland kind of gets blanked in this run but that doesn't mean the next one one of these bands isn't going to set up over portland you can see some of the lamet valley as you go south gets several inches of snow and you can see coastal regions getting in on that action and you can see that nice band moving in there south of seattle and that's that could be four plus inches of snow if you're under a convective band especially if it's below freezing it can get nasty pretty quick so this is this only goes out right now to the morning after christmas 4 a.m so you can see some areas are going to get blanked some areas are going to get underneath some of these bands and you know get some snowfall so that's what we have to watch out for and once you drop a little freezing of course then it's game on with sticking on the major arterials and highways freeways etc so i'll do another video probably tonight about looking at the long term the model's been kind of shifting back and forth the euro showing kind of a warm-up towards the new year some of the other models are not showing that and i'm kind of interesting to see what these future european models show as far as that transition they tend to be messy sometimes we have a cold arctic air mass in place and once the ridge starts to break down we could get some snowy action but again it depends if you have a system that's well north and those southerlies just really dig into that arctic air mass it could be a brief transition from snow to rain just depends on how strong that onshore, onshore flow is so i will update us tonight and i'll probably do another live video tomorrow morning or tomorrow night christmas eve night and we'll go through some high resolution models and check this stuff out again and hopefully you guys are liking these videos click like and subscribe i'm getting good responses and i'll keep spreading the weather love to the community i'll talk to you guys later